there's another recent article that just uh, uh, I found. Uh, I think it was on the 14th, um, and I posted it on Facebook called "Are They Finding the Firmament?" Now I, I, I start out with uh, meanwhile, as people suffering from severe cases of impenetrable cognitive dissidents who think that discussing what the Bible has to say concerning our Earth and its place in the cosmos is a waste of time, scientists at MIT may be confirming the scriptures right in front of us, for us. This is a quote from an article uh, taken from ibtimes.com, and I've got the link there for that. Uh, it says, the Earth is protected from fast-moving killer electrons by an invisible plasma shield which is located thousands of miles above the planet's surface, according to researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and the University of Colorado Boulder. High above the Earth's atmosphere, harmful electrons that make up the outer band of the Van Allen radiation belt travel at nearly the speed of light, pelting everything in their path. Exposure to such high-energy radiation can harm satellite electronics and pose serious health risks to astronauts. However, despite their intense energy, these electrons circling around the planet's equator cannot come below 7,200 miles from the Earth's surface due to the shield, scientists said in a study published in the journal Nature on Thursday. It's almost like these electrons are running into a glass wall in space, Daniel Baker of the University of Colorado Boulder and the study's lead author said in a statement. Somewhat like the shields created by force fields in Star Trek that were used to repel alien weapons, we are seeing an invisible shield blocking these electrons. It's an extremely puzzling phenomenon. The invisible shield, dubbed the plasmospheric hiss, is made up of very low frequency electromagnetic waves in the Earth's upper atmosphere. Scientific data and calculations have helped researchers deduce that the hiss deflects incoming electrons, causing them to smash into neutral gas atoms in the Earth's upper atmosphere and ultimately disappear. It's a very unusual, extraordinary, and pronounced phenomenon, John Foster, associate director of MIT's Haystack Observatory, said in a statement. What this tells us is if you parked a satellite or an orbiting space station with humans just inside this impenetrable barrier you would expect them to have much longer lifetimes. That's a good thing to know. The latest study is based on data collected by NASA's Van Allen probes that are orbiting within the harsh environments of the Van Allen radiation belt. Oh, you mean the one that they just flew through no problem back in the 60s? Huh, in the 70s? During the study, the researchers observed an, quote, exceedingly sharp barrier, end quote, against harmful electrons, which was steady enough to withstand a solar wind shock in October 2013. To determine what could create and maintain such a barrier, the researchers considered a few possibilities, including effects from the Earth's magnetic field and radio signals from human transmitters on Earth. Oh, yeah, (laughs) it's our Walkman that's causing this. Whatever. Um, You know, and there's another article I should post uh, where they're saying they want to, they basically want to, uh, uh, poke a hole or, or blow up or eliminate even the Van Allen belts. Okay, check this out. February 27, 2014, okay, last year. Physicists planned to wipe out Earth's Van Allen belts with radio waves. You got a depiction here of the Van Allen belts, what they look like here. It was just last year that physicists thought they had found the origin of Earth's Van Allen radiation belts. And now a prominent group of them wants those belts dead. It's understandable, given the frustration these areas of space can cause to modern astrophysicists. If you want to launch a satellite or a telescope, let alone a human being, the Van Allen belts will be a painful thorn in your side. So, says a growing group of astrophysicists, why not wipe them out altogether? It might seem odd to hear scientists propose destroying a feature of the natural world, but there is a decent scientific argument to be made that these belts provide us nothing useful and that we could lose them without a single negative effect. These guys, are, they think they came from monkeys, okay? This is the way the Earth is... De- okay, all flat Earth globe arguments aside, okay, it's understandable, at least as far as we're, we've been told, that there is a belt of radiation over us. 
And this belt of radiation apparently helps to protect us from other harmful things coming our way from the sun or what have you. You know, regardless of whether the Earth is a globe or flat, everybody seems to agree that these belts are, are good for us. You know, uh, that they're doing something. They're, they were intended to be there. This place was created with these things around us for a reason. Okay, and these knuckleheads. Hey, I think we should just blow it up. I don't really think it's important. Eh, I don't know what it does. So let's uh, let's uh, blow it up. And, and it's not the first time they wanted to do that. In fact, you could go do a Google search on going nuclear over the Pacific, Smithsonian.com, and uh, learn about Starfish Prime and Operation Fishbowl and all that. It says here, knowledge of radiation in space was still fragmentary and new. It was only four years before that, James Van Allen, a University of Iowa physicist who had been experimenting with Geiger counters on satellites, claimed to have discovered that the Earth was encircled by a deadly band of X-rays. And that radiation from the sun hit the satellites so rapidly and furiously that the devices jammed. Van Allen announced his findings on May 1st, 1958. Go back and look at what was going on in 1956 through 58, specifically what was going on in Antarctica with uh, Operation High Jump and Operation Deep Freeze. And then, and then everybody pulled out of Antarctica, signs the, they all signed the Antarctic Treaty, and NASA's then created. And all of a sudden, Van Allen, you know, does this little experiment when they start shooting stuff up in the space, and he finds the Van Allen belts uh, at a joint meeting meeting of the of the National Academy of Sciences and American Physical Society and the following day the Chicago Tribune bannered the headline radiation belt dims hope of space travel the story continued death lurking in a belt of unexpectedly heavy radiation about 700 miles above the earth today dim man's dream of conquering outer space okay so this was early on in the, in, in the creation of NASA and the whole space program. This is, it's 1958, it's even before Kennedy made his announcement to want to go to the moon. But yet 700 miles above the Earth is this thing that seems to prohibit that. There's a reason why the space shuttle never went more than 400 miles away from the Earth. And I'm going to do a whole thing on uh, Project Orion and the problem that they're having with radiation. And I, I, I thought that other video exposed Apollo as a fraud uh, that I produced recently, you know, with the, the moon crossing in front of the Earth. And I may have been wrong about the issue of the scale. And I still believe this is a fraudulent video. So don't get me wrong. I'm not endorsing this video. I still think that there's problems with it. Um, but if there is something that definitely, at least in my opinion, uh, exposes the Apollo program as a fraud, it's the Orion project. The Orion project, uh, after they retired the space shuttle, the next project that's on the board right now is called Project Orion. And um, they're pretty much telling you that Apollo never happened, especially when they put out videos like this talking about the Van Allen radiation belts. We are headed 3,600 miles above Earth, 15 times higher from the planet than the International Space Station. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous, radiation. What? As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. One more time. An area of dangerous radiation. Oh. What's wrong with that radiation? Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. That doesn't sound good. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. What? We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space? I thought this problem was solved over 40 years ago when he sent a bunch of people in jumpsuits and tin cans through it there and back a half dozen times. Oh, oh, but I forgot. The, uh, the Apollo guys, they were clueless uh, regarding the radiation belt. It didn't affect them. I don't know the distance to the Van Allen radiation belt. And if we did, it wasn't a problem. If we were going to encounter it, then we would have had to build 
the spacecraft and the spacesuit to, uh, to, to not give humans a problem. You, you don't just build something and hope it works. You study to see what uh, the threats are, the environment is, and then you say, how thick do I have to make the metal on the spacecraft so that going through this kind of radiation or these kind of meteoroids, it won't get hurt. And so and then we build it that way. I help manage the Orion Crew and Service Module Office. Um, we're responsible for developing the crew capsule, which is where the crew lives and works when they're in space, um, and the service module, which is what provides the, the power and the fuel um, and the consumables then that is plumbed over to uh, the crew module. Uh, so right now I focus a lot of my time on the development of uh, the life support system uh, for the Orion crew module. Space puts us in a different environment. When we're here on Earth, we're, we don't realize every day we're protected by the environment around us. We're, our bodies are under a certain pressure, we're protected by the natural radiation shield of the Earth, um, and when we go out into space and we don't have that natural protection, then um, the engineering and the spacecraft have to provide that protection for us. We don't have the ultimate answer for radiation on Orion. We're still working on that. Um, you know, if we were to build Orion out of the materials we need and the sole job was to protect for the radiation environment, the vehicle would really be too heavy. So we have to balance the weight of the materials that we put on the spacecraft um, with how much protection it's providing the crew. So we're really looking at it from an operational perspective. If we um, understand a radiation event has happened, the crew will actually take shelter in the aft bay of the vehicle, which is kind of down in the back end. Um, and we'll use some of the stowage things that are around them in that back end to kind of protect them from the radiation. Uh, we have found over the years that uh, water is a really great radiation absorbing material. Um, so we could do things like uh, water that's already there in the water bags for drinking and things like that, that, that water could be used to shield them, uh, as well as we've had some concepts like a, a water field vest that they could put on should they, um, to, should they know there's an event and need to be protected. We don't have a, um, a clue when it comes to like how to protect them from like radiation. So we're gonna just like put them up there in like a water suits. Yeah, we like water suits and and like if they, we put water all around them, you know, so the radiation could go like into the water and then you know they could drink it and it could be like a fantastic four. Everybody comes, be, be, they come back and be mutants when they get back. But but we we just got some ideas, you know. Yeah. But don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, I know there are refugees everywhere and like people are starving and stuff and like we have homeless all over the place. But if we spend like a few trillion dollars, um, I think we should be able to figure out how to make um, water suits for the astronauts in space. And um, then maybe it'll work out like it did for the guys in Apollo. The belts are 1,000 miles to 25,000 miles above then, the Earth. We, then we went right out through them. No effects on your cells. Mm -mm, didn't even know it. I don't think anybody, well, maybe somebody said you went through the radiation belt, but we didn't feel it inside and we didn't get any, you know, added radiation. Yeah, if you pretend that it's not really there, then you can, you can just go right through it. So apparently you had this magic window of time because now Orion's still very much concerned about it. We've got to solve this challenge before we can put people through it. And yet before, even before uh, uh, Mercury and Gemini, they were very concerned about it and trying to figure out how to solve the problem as evidence in this smithsonian.com article news of the hot band of peril immediately cast doubt on whether leka the russian dog would have been able to survive for a week in space aboard sputnik sputnik 2 as the soviets claimed in november of 1957. the soviets said that after six days the dog's oxygen ran out and he was euthanized with poisoned food it was later learned that Leica, the first live animal to be launched into space, died just hours after the launch from overheating and stress when a malfunction in the capsule caused the temperature to rise. What Van Allen had discovered were the bands of high energy particles that were held in place by strong magnetic fields and soon known as the Van Allen belts. A year later, he appeared on the cover of Time magazine as he opened an entirely new field of research magnetospheric physics and catapulted the United States into the race to space with the Soviet Union. 
On the same day, Van Allen held his press conference in May 1958. He agreed to cooperate with the United States military on a top secret project. The plan? To send atomic bombs into space in an attempt to blow up the Van Allen belts or to at least disrupt them with a massive blast of nuclear energy. Okay, guys, read up on this stuff. All right, this is smithsonian.com. Check that out. Um, there's another good article on NPR. You can look up a, a very scary light show exploding H bombs in space. Um, and when they talk about this and they, they got a video here showing, uh, footage of, uh, operation fishbowl, which is a very interesting title for, um, after they find something in Antarctica, which the flat earthers would say is the outer rim of the circle of the earth and everybody pulls out all of a sudden NASA is created. And right after that, they start shooting up rockets into space, um, with, uh, nuclear warheads on them. And this is what you start seeing with operation fishbowl, operation fishbowl. Really? I mean, it looks like they found something in Antarctica and they said, oh, what is this? wonder how high it is. How high does this thing go? And they start blowing off nuclear bombs in the atmosphere. Now, were they doing that because they were testing the firmament? Were they trying to bl blast through the firmament? Or, or, or is it about the Van Allen belt with the radiation? Is that the problem? I don't know. The, this article goes on to describe, uh, again, the Van Allen energy belts and what they came to understand about them and discover it, then blow it up. The plan was to send rockets hundreds of miles up higher than the Earth's atmosphere and then detonate nuclear weapons to see, A, if a bomb's radiation would make it harder to see what was up there, like incoming Russian missiles, B, if an explosion would do any damage to objects nearby, C, if the Van Allen belts would move a blast down the bands to an earthly target, Moscow, for example. And most peculiar, D, if a man-made explosion might alter the natural shape of the belts. The scientific basis for these proposals is not clear. Fleming is trying to figure out if Van Allen had any theoretical reason to suppose the military could use the Van Allen belts to attack a hostile nation. He supposes that at the height of the Cold War, the most pressing argument for a military experiment was, if we don't do it, the Russians will. And indeed, the Russians did test atomic bombs and hydrogen bombs in space. No big surprise. They were also down there in Antarctica prior. And oh, by the way, while, while we supposedly got ahead of them and started to beat them in the alleged space race, you know, we're, we're led to believe they just, oh, oh, we lost and they gave up. No, they sent like something like 40 missions down to Antarctica while we were playing around with the so-called Apollo space program. So something's going on here, and these psychopaths, you know, they go, they look up there, they see something. Oh, that looks cool. Let's blow it up. Oh, we don't really think it's important, even though they have admitted that they know it's there for our protection. Uh, why do we put our fate into the hands of monkey men? These people think they came from monkeys, for crying out loud. And they, they hold within their grasp technology that could make life for us here on Earth very bad when they do things like they're attempting to do at CERN, to rip holes in the fabric of time and space and recreate what they think is the Big Bang, opening up portals into dimensional you know, realms. And, and now keep in mind, these monkey men think that the whole universe got here when a microscopic dot exploded. So what are they doing? They're slamming microscopic dots together, trying to recreate the Big Bang. Uh, I don't really think it takes a very high IQ to uh, think that through. Wait a minute. You think we got here from a microscopic dot exploding, and now you're slamming microscopic dots together uh, trying to explode them and re uh, recreate the Big Bang. Uh, hello? Guys, maybe there's a reason why they put the Hindu god Shiva, the god of destruction, dancing in a portal outside their front freaking door. Bunch of lunatics. And meanwhile, elsewhere, a bunch of other lunatic psychopaths are thinking they can poke holes or blow up uh, the Van Allen belt, the very thing that's up there, put there for our protection. You know, people out there thinking I'm crazy? Anyway, let's go back to the original ibtimes.com article regarding the uh, invisible plasma shield. The last quote here. 
says, it's like looking at the phenomenon with new eyes, with a new set of instrumentation, which give us the detail to say, yes, there is this hard, fast boundary, Foster said. Hmm. Have they found the firmament? I don't know. I mean, it's not exactly the description of the firmament, but uh, if it's not the firmament, it may be one of the heavens in the layers below it. But whatever the case may be, the choice of words being used, as I've stressed here in bold, uh, above, seems more than interesting to me. A hard, fast boundary that is an impenetrable barrier out there about 7,200 miles up? Note also the repeated statements about how harsh space is and in and beyond the Van Allen belts. And yet we were told NASA sent a bunch of guys in jumpsuits and a tin can through it 12 times round trip on at least a half dozen alleged missions to the moon. Job 37.18 says, Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong as a molten looking glass? Amos 9.6 in the New American Standard Bible says, The one who builds his upper chambers in the heavens and has founded his vaulted dome... Over the earth, he who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth, the Lord is his name. There may yet be a legitimate reason people are going back to the scriptures in order to see and test slash prove, 1 Thessalonians 5.21, the truth for themselves.